Let's move to Cape Town for the last evidence by the five policemen whose amnesty applications have served before the Truth Commission's Amnesty Committee the last two weeks. Together, they killed at least 65 people in the name of the apartheid state. We'll tell you about 21 of these murders tonight. In July 1986, nine youths, the youngest 15 years old, were gunned down in Kwandebele. They wanted to go into exile and become trained guerrillas, Jacques Echter told the Amnesty Committee. And the security police merely wanted to prevent them from returning to South Africa and committing acts of terror. Should one call it preemptive murder? Mama Sela tell us when he go, goes with us, and then they're going to train us and take us over to exile. And that never happened. Exile was in heaven. Some of the bodies of the Kwandebele Nine lie unmarked and covered in grass in a small graveyard in Mama Lodi. After the security police, led by Captain Jacques Hechter, had done their job, the remains could not be identified. Mabel Malobola's grandson, Mbuso, was one of the dead. They didn't have eyes. Well, I thought the fire exploded their eyes out. They didn't have this of the head. It, it, it is just this, this, this part. This part wasn't there. And they haven't got hands, they haven't got legs. They were just bones. Hierdie incident het gedieren in 1986 plase van die precieze datum uh, kan ek nie onthou nie. Mama Sella het op daar die stadium onder die uh, MK, dus die ANC om Kanto Wessieswe naam van Mike in Mama Lodi rondbeweeg. Uh, hy het op een dag na my toe gekom en gesê hy was, of hy is, dier van die meer militante jeugdiges genader uh, en gevra of hy nie moendlik vir hulle kan reel om die land te verlaat vir opleiding nie. According to Hechter, the youths had already gone to Kwandebele to escape harassment by the security police in Mamelodi. Mama Sela knew where to find them. Mama Sela had ons naar die adres toe geneem. Mama Sela gauw sy oosthuis en is toe in. En die volgende oomlik het ek net, uh, het ek net die skote oor klap. Dit was gereel geweest, dit was op my, in my opdracht geweest. Ek het gesê hulle om te gaan elimineer. Hulle het hulle toe geëlimineer, doodgeskiet. Het uitgekom, in die kar geklim, ek het vir gauw sy opdracht gegeen om die kan petrol te neem en oor al die oorledenis te gooi aan die brand te steek weet jy of hulle reeds dood was op daar die stadium? daar was drie AK-47 uh, gewere op hulle leeg gemaakt wat meen om om by 90 rond is in een klein kamerkie so daar was geen twyfel dat hulle allemaal reeds dood was nie did these people die because they were involved in acts of boycotts, intimidation, and so on? Or did they die because they had expressed a wish or desire to undergo training? Why did they die? Eerstens was hulle activiste gewees. Hulle was activiste bezig met uh, al hierdie vreselike optredes. En verder het hulle versoek om uit te gaan om opgeleid te word as terroriste. So, die eliminatie was een preemptive strijk geweest om te verhoed dat opgeleide mense terugkom. Wat soveel... The preemptive strike has been argued as a political motive before. Last year, we heard the story of the need for Ding Ten. Again, youths from Mamelodi allegedly asked for guerrilla training, and again they died a gruesome death. Whether the committee grants these men amnesty or not, they will, according to Mabel Malobola, be another reckoning. I can say I, I can't forgive anybody because really I am not God. 